All right, here we go. Impression extension. Red Eye City, Trent Radio. Stick with me on this one. I'm not sure. I'm trying to get comfortable here. I'm not sure where this is going to go. There's a lot going on, a lot of stuff in my head. I don't have someone to interview for today. Um, I tried. It's not as easy as I thought it would be. Um, but that being said, there's still a lot of stuff to maybe talk about this one. I'm not sure where this is going to go. So stick with me. I'm going to be all over the place. Probably going to have to play some music at the end if I don't fill enough time, but I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to do my best. Uh, quick, uh, the kind of quick snapshot of today, what I'm doing right now. So today I'm just sitting around. Just had class, uh, had a finance class. Nobody knows what's going on. Nobody can understand, um, but whatever. Uh, I have a therapist appointment in a couple of hours. So I haven't talked to him for a while, so it's going to be pretty cool to talk to him and catch up with a lot of my ideas and a lot of things that are going on right now. So what I think I might do is I might tape a little bit now of just some thoughts and some things that I'm thinking and then talk to uh, my guy and then uh, maybe come back after and finish it up and see if what I'm thinking still holds true or um, more true or whatever. So where to begin? I think last time that I talked to you, I talked about being alone a little bit and how it was really weird. Um, yeah, still same, same case. It's still... Um, it's not easy for some people that I've talked to here. There's, it's reality is starting to. Well, we're going to talk about reality in a little bit, but reality is starting to kick in, and um, I'm starting to see and hear a lot of people that are being alone, and it sucks. You know, it rips my heart out because um, for some people it's not easy to um, to meet people. Um, I'm trying to figure that out right now. Um, I always seem to be doing okay meeting people. Um, am I meeting meaningful people? Mm, yes and no. Starting to a little bit more. But I think that's because I'm getting a little bit more comfortable and confident here. And what you are or how you feel is who you are. I, that doesn't make sense. Um, <laughs> it's more like what you think... I don't know. We'll get to that one later. Anyway, back to this alone thing. So I'm starting to hear some people talk about how they feel alone and some of the things that they miss. And, you know, being abroad for a student, that's one thing. You know, younger student. I'm a little older, obviously. I'm, um, you know, I'm using Trent as a learning device and as a way to expand and become more in this world. And they allowed me to come over here and come abroad which is sick. It's so amazing. But I'm starting to see some of the younger guys and girls um, struggle a little bit. And what they're struggling with, I find, is friendship. And the biggest, and in real friendship. So it seems like everybody here at first um, was party, party, party. And they wanted to, um, you know, meet as many people as possible. And mo more of a numbers game as opposed to, like in quantity, as opposed to quality. And that's maybe another topic that we can get to as well. Um, but uh, maybe I should write that down because I will forget right under my other one. So what's happening now is I'm seeing these little branches of people breaking off. Like, for example, today I was in a class and some of the Spanish girls that are, were in my German class, they're in this one class and there's three of them and they've been tight, tight, tight the whole time. Every time they're sitting together, they're talking together. So, you know, when I hang out with them, it's always the three of them in the class and blah, 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 blah. So anyway, this Austrian guy's in the class as well. And he was not part of that group. And last week I saw him sitting with the group. And this week I saw one of the girls came in with him about 10 minutes before the other two girls. And they sat in totally separate sections. And I thought that was interesting because I'm starting to see that even with some of my friends. They're starting to, I don't know, you want to say match up, I guess, or break off to start to do their own solo thing. And I, I find it really interesting that um, the party scene is still here, definitely. 
but they're not as big and they're becoming more um, intimate, and, intimate and more defined with the people that they are hanging out with a lot more. There's not as many assorted parties as there used to be and I'm not sure why that is and I'm trying to, you know, I'm just trying to learn because that's really what I'm here for. So today observing the Spanish, um, they had virtually like no contact with that one. And then at the end of the class, I, I talked to them because they're sitting in front of me and I'm like, hey, what's going on? How's it going? Because one of them's struggling with the English classes and she's here for a year and not have, it's not easy for her because she doesn't speak English very well. Um, so we talked about that. Then we talked about partying this weekend and she's like, do you know where any parties are? And I'm like, well, no, not today because today's Tuesday. Um, I said, you know, Friday I will. Well, there'll be tons. She's like, okay, let me know. Let me know because a lot of my Spanish friends are going away and I'm not. And that was shocking to me. And so was the other girl that she was with too. She's not going away. But the other one that was with the guy, I think, is. Uh, I'm not sure for sure. But anyway, um, I thought that was interesting that they started to break off. And that, it, not that she's looking for something to do, but I kind of feel bad for those people that are left without the group or somebody they want to be with all the time. Um because now after all of this, you know, two months of being here, all this work, meeting people and meeting people and all of a sudden the people that you've met are gone and now you've got to re-meet and that's not easy as well. So one thing I would take into account if you're traveling for school like that, and I don't, it's hard to say, like, do you want to make less friends that are better or do you want to make more friends that are not as good? Or can you find a balance? Now, we're month two, so I'm sure this is all going to balance out. And then maybe some groups will work with other groups or hang out with other groups and things will blend. But over the last week, there's been more than one person that I've talked to that has talked to me about feeling alone. And even that this one whole year is starting to seem longer um, and not as exciting as it was maybe a month ago or even a couple of weeks ago, for me, it's like that's there's not enough time. I'm going to be doing my best to stay here somewhere over in Europe for at least a few years, maybe try to write something, figure something out, but I love it here. Um, and I don't know what that is or why that is. I'm going to be trying to, um, you know, write a lot of stuff down and try to put together something that maybe might relate to somebody or a situation where somebody can apply it and become more immersed in a city or in a group or be more vulnerable to um, whatever it is, like rejection maybe. Um, and that, well, that in it, that might be, I don't know what it is actually. That but Rejection might be one of them. And when I came over here, um, there was a few things that I told myself that I was going to do. And one of those things was try everything, you know, and not like, you know, that cliche, like I try everything once. No, I'm trying everything and I'm going to try it again and I'm going to try it again and I'm going to try it again. Um, because if you try something once and it's not what you think it will be, that doesn't mean that's the way it is. That's just the way it affected you at that one time, or that's just the way it worked out with either another person or another situation. Is that situation repeatable? Maybe, but you won't know until you try to repeat it. Just like a stereotype. You meet somebody and you have a stereotype of that person because if they talk to you for half an hour, are you going to now talk to people that are similar to that person? Or are you going to stereotype and stay away from them? Well, obviously stereotyping and staying away from them is the wrong thing to do because that was only one person that you talked to and built that stereotype on. Stick with me because I'm going to, like I said, I'm all over the place here. Now, with that, being vulnerable for me and being able to go challenge myself, and I guess I'll throw some examples out there because I've got lots of time. Um... I don't know if I talked about, okay, so, <laughs> all right, we'll go with this one first. I've never been naked in a men's change room or a sauna, whatever, right? For what, I don't know why, for whatever reason, um, I just never was. 
um, don't feel comfortable, whatever, uh, whatever. Anyway, over here in Austria, it doesn't go like that. You go into a sauna with any clothes on or a towel, you're getting shamed almost. The culture here is unbelievable about nudity. Where the culture and the, you know, where I lived growing up, nudity was like the worst. Like you just didn't get naked in front of somebody. So first day I go into this change room, I've got my shorts on and I've got a towel on. And I, it's a co-ed sauna, so it's even crazier for me, obviously. So not for them. So anyway, um, I walk out of the change room into this change area that's co-ed. And there is, so I do yoga and my gym, the gym beside it, sorry, beside my, just again, I'm all over the place. Beside my gym, no, that doesn't matter. Anyway. I come out of the change room and there's two women, beautiful, stark naked, five feet from me. And I was like, whoa, what just happened? So I put my head down, get past them. I hit the sauna and everybody's naked. So I don't go in because I'm kind of like, mm, don't feel right. A, everybody's naked. I don't know, there's maybe like five or six people in there. And I left and then I really thought to myself, okay, like what's going on here? I've got like... This is a Canadian reality that I've developed in myself. I'm over here in Austria. That doesn't seem to be the way that it rolls. Um, so I talked to some friends here and some Austrians, and they thought I was weird. And they explained the culture. They explained all of it. So I thought, you know what? Okay, here's something that I'm going to go do. So the next time I was at the gym, this, uh, about a month ago, um, I thought, okay, I'm going to go do this. So this time I just had a towel on. And I thought, I'm going to go in, I'm going to go naked, and here we go. Good luck with this. <laughs> and I went, and I went to the sauna, and lo and behold, there was nobody there, and I was free as a bird. So put that in the box for getting naked, but that wasn't good enough. So what I did next time was the same thing. And the next time that I went into the sauna, there was an older lady there. And she was naked and just lying on the bench. And I came in and she kind of got up and, you know, put her towel on a little bit. And then five minutes later, she left. And I thought, okay, awesome. I just did it another time. So two times. The time, these are literally in a row, like build up. Next time I go in, I don't know, a week later or so. And I mean, they're alone again. And two people come in, butt naked, butt naked <laughs> and they literally sit like right beside me one of them even lies down and these are men and women now so again i sit there i bite the bullet and i'm like okay you can do this you can do this and then i did it and then the last time that i went there was um two there's two saunas one's a super hot one and one's not so hot and i was like okay i'm doing good i'm doing good and i turn around the corner and the sauna is jammed there's like seven, eight people, six people, a lot of people, and I bailed. And I, I didn't feel good about bailing, but I also felt, but I did feel good that I recognized that um, it was like that I did bail and that I wasn't ready when I thought I was ready. And um, recognizing that I have work to do still on that if that's something that I want to do. And, um, and I was okay with that. Like I wasn't ashamed. I wasn't down on myself. I wasn't like thinking about, oh, now I've I've got to start from square one and blah, 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 blah. I really looked at what I had accomplished up until that point and, um, and I felt good. So I felt like I can do it now. Have I gone back since? No. <laughs> but that doesn't mean I'm not going to. I've just been really busy. But... There has been a few times when I could have and I didn't because I thought it would be too busy. So now I got to figure that out. Now I got to write that down too. Anyway, what this leads me into is a little bit about manifestation. Okay. And this I'm going to try to tie back with, um, with um, what I was talking about friends and, and hanging out and doing things with other people and being alone. So... I've been, I believe huge in manifestation. My, for any of the people that have listened to me, my YouTube channel, you can go, hey, there you go, YouTube plug, Red Eye City, R-E-D-E-Y-E, -E -E, 
C-I-T-Y, on YouTube and on Instagram. You can see some of these shows from before and from last year and some interviews and the way, uh, and if you listen, you may be able to get a better understanding of who I am and where my head's at and what I'm doing. But um, if not, that's okay. So anyway, let's get back to this manifestation. I believe strongly, 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 strongly in manifestation. Now, that does not mean I believe in quick manifestation or greedy manifestation. I believe in true manifestation when it come when it comes to everything but especially how it works and now just so everybody is clear i am not an expert at anything everything that i talk about is just my what i'm thinking i don't even read hardly which is a negative but um you know a lot of what i talk about is just from experience and is just from my own feelings take them or leave them that's what they are but I make no claim to anything. So back to this manifestation. So I believe that true manifestation can be accomplished. And with that, you are able to foreshadow your future through manifestation to some degree. Now, I think people are better at it or worse at it. I believe that there are energies or something that supports that and helps that. I believe that the more you believe in it and it becomes you, the more powerful you are at it. And I want to kind of talk about how I go about doing it. Um and how it's become just who I am. It's just part of what I do every day, and it's pretty cool. So, and again, I can tie this back to virtually everything um, when it comes to the power of being able to do something, accomplish something, want something, or become something. Now, there are limitations, maybe. I don't know that answer. But if you want to believe it, then maybe there is. Can I become the president of the United States? No, I'm not an American citizen. All right. So on an extreme, there's a limitation. Can I get around that? Uh, I don't think so. So that's not going to happen. Right. So some of these manifestation goals or desires or thoughts still have to be in a spectrum that is somewhat attainable to at least 1% which is pretty good because if you've got 1% chance, then there's still a chance and that's all you need to work with. So for me, manifestation started um, learning about the, the book and the movie, The Secret and how if you think it, it will happen. Okay, easy enough, right? You think, uh, I think it, it happens, so let's just think it and it will happen. Okay. Day one, you think it happens, nothing happens. Day 30, same thing. Day 40, same thing. And then you just stop thinking about it, right? Well, who's to say how long manifestation works? Who's to say, think about think about this. And so that's just the way the secret kind of, I read into the secret. Again, my way is a lot different. We're going to talk about that. But what I want you to visualize, I guess first, and again, I'm all over the place here is how you can grow or what manifestation really is so if you think of a bodybuilder somebody who's working out think about your brother think about yourself think about your dad your mom your kid whoever and look at that person or look at yourself in the mirror and think about okay right now i can do x amount of push-ups and i can do x amount of Um, pull-ups and I can lift weights and that's how strong I am well if you manifest that you want to do a hundred push-ups and you can only do five right now and a hundred sit-ups and you can only do 10 of those right now do you think you can just go from five to ten or ten to a hundred 
I don't think so, right? It doesn't work that way. You've got to go five, and then the next day might be six, and then it's back down to five, and then it's back up to 10. And gradually you build your muscle and your muscle memory and your strength so that at some point you will hit 100 and 100 sit-ups and 100 push-ups and 100 pull-ups, whatever that may, whatever the number is. But it's something that you worked on for an extended amount of time, whatever amount of time that took you. And now everybody's different. Some people learn and get stronger faster. Some people, it happens slower. Some people need to practice every day. Some people need to practice once a week, right? So everybody is an individual when it comes to this manifestation and creating your reality. Um, but once you get stronger at it, it all becomes stronger. So when you are manifesting and you're believing in what you want to become or what you want to achieve and that that's what's going to happen or whatever, or how you're going to meet that girl or guy and can you become more this or more that, whatever it is, it needs to be, it needs to be exercised and it needs to be strong and built and developed and created for it to actually work. Uh, hopefully you're following me i'm kind of not following but i'm around i'm kind of in it so when that happens the other things that you start to become or start to want to do it becomes easier for that so it's like building a base like a concrete to anything right this base of belief and this base of manifestation power or whatever you want to call it um now has become part of you it is now part and is solidified inside of you that you do it without even paying attention to it right you're strong now you can do 100 push-ups and 100 sit-ups well now you know what when you got to go move boxes for your friend moving it's a lot easier for you you can go do it or you think you know what i just met somebody new and they like hiking well you can probably hike better than you did before you were doing those push-ups and sit-ups right like kind of you know what i mean i kind of i know what i mean so hopefully you guys know what i mean so <clears throat> once you've built this intuition uh, not intuition that's another thing once you've built the ability to manifest it now becomes your beliefs and what those are in other areas and how you want to live your life and how strong that manifestation will happen. So if you're a racist, if you're a jerk, and if you're a negative person, your manifestation power will start to become those things. And you will, again, this is just me saying this shit, so don't fall, like just... This is all my thoughts. <laughs> you don't believe it. That's all I want to say. Or believe it, whatever you want. Anyway, your manifestation will now be rooted and grounded in those thoughts or in that attitude. So now when you manifest things, which everybody does, money, a little too direct, maybe, if you just say, I want money, maybe let's, you know, get a little creative and figure out how you're going to manifest money. But if that is your thing and you have now the ability to manifest or you think you do and you're a negative person, that manifestation will be rooted and would grow from that belief of who you are. If you're a jerk and you start to want money, I believe the power of manifestation will make that dirtier money, will make that less enjoyable money. Now, possibly you'll get it, but it'll come from more of this negative, more of this anger, more of this jerkiness, and that will be a direction that your power of manifestation will take you. You might find yourself in scarier situations. You might find yourself surrounded with people that are similar to you. Now, if you like that, that's on you. You're ignorant and whatever. But who likes to be an asshole or who likes to be a jerk? If you find that those are the types of people that are now surrounding you, 
and you go to events or you go do things that is surrounded by similar types of people like that, you got to take a step back and think, whoa, why is this? Why am I surrounded? Or why am I engulfed? Or why am I immersed in these things that are negative? After I've done all this manifestation and all I want is this and this and this, or to be this and this and this. Well, great, but you got to remember where it's coming from. So for me, before I got into manifestation, I took a huge shift in the way I lived, the way I looked at my life, the way that I am, who I am, and what I want to be. And I force fed that into me, even when I didn't believe it, even when it didn't seem right, even when it felt wrong. For me, I don't see anything wrong with being a good person all the time to everybody. I tell everybody that I meet, and I've met a lot of people here, and we've had some crazy discussions and awesome ones, and one of the, not the silver linings, but one of the themes that keeps coming up is treat others how you want to be treated. Now, we've all heard that all the time, but have we thought about that, right? And when I have these conversations with with some people here, and then we talk about that, I can see some self-reflection, And it's like, huh, that makes sense. And it does make sense. Treat people how you want to be treated. Is it that simple? Mm, On paper, maybe. But there's a lot more to that. So anyway, back to where I was getting back with how I started the manifestation. And it was really a life switch. And it was an outlook switch. I got fired from a job about five years ago that I had for a long time. Um, the time was right. It was time to go, whatever. And, but it really allowed me to take a step back and think, how do I want to live the rest of my life? And one of the things that was a reoccurring part of that job and my jobs before that was the fact that you're not good enough. And the people that work for you, even if they are good enough, need to think that they're not good enough. Right? Let me say that again. You're not good enough. And the people that work for you are not good enough. And they need, even if they are good enough, they need to think they're not good enough. That's disgusting. And that's what's going on out there. There is so much suppression, not only, it's everywhere. It really is. I don't even know where to start with that. That's another topic. We'll get to that one one day. Let me write that down. Suppression. Impression suppression. (laughs) Anyway, so back to where I was going with this. So I took a step back and I thought, whoa, that that has been my core and what I've been working within for 20 years. I've been working within this system that has been telling me that I'm not good enough and that the people around me aren't good enough. So What do you think that does when you start trying to think about other things in your life that you want to do, that you want to accomplish? You want to become better. You want to become healthier. You want to become faster, stronger, smarter, more creative, whatever it is, with all those things. If it's coming from a place that you're not good enough, you will never be good enough. And that's horseshit. So I said, enough of that. And I started to shape, well, not just that. So I started to shape my life and the way I'm thinking on the opposite of that. And what started to happen was unbelievable. So, you know, I took some time off and whatever, did some stuff and worked on how I was going to live and what my next steps are and things like that. And all of a sudden, bam, someone comes into my life that lives the way that I would draw or has a mental state in a, a ment- an attitude towards the world of what I visualized or drew up in my head of how I would want to be. And this person was put in front of me for five days a week, 10 hours a day while we're digging ditches and digging pools and driveways. To me, 
that was a huge sign after the work I did from getting fired and from trying to figure out what I wanted to do and starting to believe that what I was doing and what I was told to be doing was wrong and pushed against that. All of a sudden, this person is put in front of me and like virtually for months, for about three months. And I was able to listen and learn and see how this person lives the, his life and how um, the people around him are and who the people are around him and how he achieves goals and targets and how he treats others and all of that stuff. And I was like, okay, this can be done. And was that a sign? Maybe, I, I don't know, but um, it was something. So then I started to think about it even more and really um, focus again on all of the positive, all of the time, and we're gonna get to that because I've just discovered last night that there is a fault in thinking positive all the time, and that is maybe you're blind to the negative, and just because you don't wanna see it, another story. Anyway, so I started to really believe that. I started to apply everything into that scope of positive. So some shitty things would happen in my life. Something would happen and I would look at it and it would be a struggle and it would be hard and I'd have to deal with it. And all I would try to do is maybe not all, but well, yeah, all now for sure was try to find the silver lining in whatever situation was happening. And to be able to step back reassess, um, I guess, reconstruct my feelings, my emotion, my thoughts into more of a positive, into a learning, into a, um, like, like just from a scope of there has to be something good here, find it, hold on to it and build from that because I don't want to go into that negative and work from that because I was trying to build this foundation within me of positive of everything has it is a good we can work with everything um, sharing and having experiences and just all of it so I started to surround myself. so what happened then I started to discover more events and more people and more communities that started or that do think the way that I think. Is that a coincidence or is that because that was the way that I was thinking and by extension, that is who I was surrounding myself with or going to, and you can kind of see where this is going, it just snowballs into one event, maybe one more person, maybe one more experience that you feel better about and grew from as opposed to feeling suppressed and actually retracted from. So I kept on working on that and um, more and more people started to surround themselves or become part of my life. Um, and some of the, um, the people that were not in that mindset actually started to leave my life and sad happy whatever it is um, some of those people had to go because they just were that anchor that continued to see maybe not so much consciously but subconsciously affect the way that I was trying to grow the way that I was trying to build myself um, in a all from a positive place, I believe. Um, and when I chose to let those people go, there was no looking back. And years go by and you think, hmm, maybe we should let those people back in. But your intuition now steps in and protects you and says, no, you don't need that. So move on. And you do. And you don't think about it. Because you are now in a place that is only looking for positive. You're in a place that is looking to help others to become more 
why would you bring in that negative, right? It becomes kind of a no brainer. And I say that just because now it feels like that. And I know it didn't before and it doesn't a lot of the time. But for right now, it's kind of one of those things that if you're not around it and it's not in your society, in whatever society is just two people, right? So your house is a society on its own. Then how can it affect you and how can it affect the decisions around you? Well, it can't. Because if it's not there, then how it's not there, right? You can't get a sunburn if you're sitting inside, right? Like it's just it's one of those things. You can't become more affected by in negativity if you don't surround yourself with more negative people. And if you do surround yourself with more negative people, you by extension will probably become more negative. And this isn't even on a conscious level. We can sit here and say to ourselves, yeah, whatever. I know when they're negative and that doesn't affect me. I say bullshit. It affects you 100%. Your subconscious is a lot stronger than you think. Or maybe you think it's stronger than great because then you're on it. Um, Your subconscious really runs the show. Everything you do during the day, you might think you're making decisions, but your subconscious is making hundreds of decisions for every one decision that you have from, from everything, everywhere, all the, everywhere. Anyway, back to manifestation. So what I'm also saying is that when you build your, yourself and your inner, inner values and who you want to be, that's when the manifestation can start because unless you're grounded and unless you know who or what direction you truly want to be and you really, really believe it, you're not going to be able to just manifest because the manifestation won't know where it's coming from and for what purpose. You know, you if your manifestation is floating, let's just say floating around in your body and it's ready to work for you and you flexed it a little bit and it's like, okay, you know what, now it's time to make this happen and then it looks for mm, but where am I come what angle am I coming at it from am I coming at it from a positive angle am I coming at it from a negative or a greedy or a selfish or a giving or um, an embracing or an empathetic where is that manifestation supposed to grow from and then it can become so I say you need to build who you are And have these values and have this way of life. At least at the same time as you're starting to try to manifest. Because it truly does come from deep, 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 deep. And once, again, once you have it, it's a lot easier to see it working. And you're you're able to tie in a lot of things. Now, some people might say that synchronicity. Sure. Maybe. Can you manifest synchronicity? Why not? Right? If you can't manifest, if you have the ability to, if you believe in manifestation, then you should essentially believe that you're able to manifest things that are like synchronicity. Right? And for those of you that don't know that synchronicity is, um, synchronicity is things that happen maybe at like, at like a weird time so there's been some crazy synchronicity things that happen here and and some of them are like huge and some of them are not so huge so here's an example um on one of my radio shows i had uh jesse the holistic hippie she was on and we talked about chakras now i have had that episode probably for i don't know three months and I just released it two weeks ago. So I released it on the Tuesday or Wednesday of the week. It's my only episode on chakras. And um, I released it, whatever, it was good. And on the Friday, I jumped on a bus to from to go from Austria here to Venice, Italy. The bus was rammed. I was with four people, like four of my friends, and there was only single seats. So we all kind of looked around and started just sitting wherever and I had an option to sit beside some I don't know 25 year old dude or beside this like 50 55 year old let's let's say 50 uh, year old lady and 
I sat beside the lady. It just happened. So two minutes in, whatever bus starts going, I talk to her. I say, hey, what are you up to? Blah, 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 blah. I'm a Canadian. I speak English. And she, you know, we started talking. And I don't know, maybe five minutes in, I say, you know, what do you do in Vienna? She works in Vienna. And she says, I work with energy and I work with chakras. I was like, whoa, what do you mean? And so she talked to me about her work. She works with chakras, with people, with families, and with animals. She was amazing. She's amazing. Anyway, um, I I was like, wow. Like, she, and then she says to me, "Do you know what the chakras are?" And I'm like, "Yeah, of course I do." And I showed her my video of uh, me and Jesse talking about chakras that I had just released a couple days sooner, and that opened up a huge discussion. And this is part of this manifestation about surrounding yourself with people, and it just happens huge conversation on this bus for over two and a half hours straight i talked to this lady about everything and about so much about energy and what her work is all about and the soul just so much awesome stuff that there was no way in my eyes that that was a fluke that she was sitting there with an empty like everything lined up for me to sit beside this lady and talk to her and we exchanged information we're emailing all the time now she's inviting me to this workshop in vienna to work in this energy system and to learn about it and um when i think about manifestation and manifesting the people that i want around me here was like an amazing example of me or it happening because i'm it's just I believe in it from this place all the time. So it's just out there. It's around me. It's I don't like to visualize it like an aura or something like that, maybe, or a cloud, like this cloud's around me and it's reaching out and protecting me. Maybe if you're to like be a cartoon artist and draw something like that, maybe manifestation is. Maybe it is some sort of a fog that's around you or like a pulse that can go farther the stronger you are. And, if, and draw more of it into you than it is from, yeah, here they go. They're coming to get me, the police. <laughs> anyway, um, or it's more of, um, well, yeah. So if you, think, if you think of a cloud, so if I have a small cloud around me, my penetration of being able to manifest is only so far, only so strong. The stronger you get, the farther you reach. And if you connect with somebody that is in the same situation or the same mindset, those two strengths just pull you together and bam all of a sudden you're sitting on a bus going to Vienna and going to Venice in the middle of Austria talking chakras right so pretty sick anyway we have this big conversation the people in my group are like oh what just happened they're like you just talked to that lady for two and a half hours straight I'm like I know it was amazing like it was the best so when I talk about synchronicity, that's kind of what synchronicity is, right? I put that video out on the Tuesday or Wednesday, and bam, I'm with that lady on the Friday, and I'm able to reference that chakra video that I had had for three months, and if it wasn't published, I wouldn't have been able to show her that. It was on my computer. I was able to show it to her on, on my phone. Well, she ended up downloading it anyway um, because uh, you know we were talking about it, but that was huge for me. Like thinking about that um, and how synchronicity works, I'm a believer. Like there's so many of those things that happen. Now, again, some people say it's fluke, some people say whatever. But for me, I say no, it's not fluke. But what I do say, and again, I got to write this down, is allowing the possibility or allowing and surrendering yourself to your manifestation or to your subconscious to let it work for you to draw those types of people in and then when they are close it's what do you do with it then and that's why i say when you believe in yourself and you believe in your message and you believe in how or who you want to be like or be with or be in general you need to believe it all the way down and all around everywhere because that is when it starts to work and it starts to work in let's just say in mysterious ways 
if that's even a thing. So anyway, let's, we're just going to stick with this story with this lady and how this story has developed. So back and forth, she gives me some recommendations for our friends and we do this and we do that. And then we keep chatting and, um, Oh, you know what? I'm going to pull this up. And then, uh, whatever, she's going to invite me to do this and that we go to, I, so then I go to, um, the next weekend I go to Prague because again, it's so close over here. I'm telling you, if anybody wants to come to school here, you should do it. I literally took a train, sorry, a bus and a train return from Austria to Prague and it was less than, it was 18, it was like 75 Canadian dollars, 80 bucks. There and back, they are, like it's so cheap to slip around. It's awesome. So anyway, on the way home from Prague on the train, just like everything, or the bus, um, I sit beside this another lady, or she sits beside me, and we start talking, and she's got a dog, and she starts telling me that nobody likes a dog, and blah, 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 blah. And I'm on the train with her for, I think, two or three hours for until she was getting off. And we're talking and we're talking and talking. And um, I talked to her about this lady that I met the week before and about all these chakras. And that this lady has studied all of this type of holistic um, um, health and wellness and belief system and is looking to work more in it. And um, she's been into a bunch of places that teach all of that. She works in just a, I don't want to say a regular job, but an office job. And that this is kind of a hobby that she's trying to break from. And I talked to her how this lady's making a career out of it and how she's helping people and helping animals. So uh, she's, I'm like, hey, I can like connect you guys, right? So now it's gone from me to me to this lady to me to another lady. So I get back, I email my, my friend, the one in Vienna who I first talked to, and I told her how um, uh, I told her how I met this lady, and if I could send her information. So I'm gonna and I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna read to you the email, one of the emails that I sent to her, my lady from Vienna, the first lady, and then her email to me, and then we're gonna connect with the other one. And, you know, to tie this all up, again, when you're manifesting how you want to live and what you want to do, things just fall into place. And people and experiences start to build that are what you're thinking and who you are. And it's so wild. Like, I've got, there's so many stories of what's going on right now that are happening and essentially, it is some sort of a manifestation, synchronicity, fate, destined path, foreshadowing that I think can be worked with. So I'm going to wrap this up with um, these emails that I sent to this lady and her response to me. So I said, hey, Rihanna, Prague was awesome, beautiful, and I definitely don't have enough time. It's funny that you talked about fasting meditation and connecting again it seems since we met i've connected with people way more than normal that have similar lifestyles and views as ours and i'm surprised how easy and natural it is to talk with them it kind of feels as if there is a stronger draw to them if that even makes sense i met a great cool lady on the train from prague and she lives in bruno we talked for quite some time and i told her about you and she seemed very interested to reach out is it okay that i give her your contact info okay pretty straightforward you know this is where i'm at anyway so her response was hey david yes maybe for prague it takes more than a weekend and i agree it's a beautiful it is beautiful about your feeling and this was in reference to meeting all these people and doing all these things you know it's been a while since i had to get to this particular moment from an energetic point of view it's time to make the choice to be to walk in the truth who is there and who is not there? Well, skip the shift to the next life. It has come to the time to be connected with ourselves and live in awareness, others that fear will lead us. It is also a special moment. 
we are approaching Samhain. And until the beginning of February, all boundaries of the, of the various dimensions will be much more suitable. Even those who do not believe that there is anything beyond what they see with the physical eyes and perceive that something subtle moves. Of course you can give my contact, and thanks for the publicity. <laughs> right? So, pretty sick email. I'm, like, tearing up right now. Pretty sick email. Right on the money. Right? You're not going to get emails like that that connect to you or who you are. If you're not going to believe it in yourself... And if you're not going to allow that belief to take over. All right. I'm out. We're going to listen to uh, a couple songs from uh, Bren, Medusa. And you know what? Maybe I'll play another one for six minutes. But thank you for listening. Any questions? Red Eye City, Instagram, Red Eye City, YouTube. Thank you.